Boom. There's a purpose in life while we're living. Boom, boom. We share a common goal to make it to heaven. Boom, boom. Shining our lights so others might see. We've got a purpose in life. We're working hard to be with you. And the Feast of Tabernacles came after uh, the Feast of the Passover. Because the Feast of the Passover, as you'll remember, those not Bible students, was the feast when he delivered them from Egyptian bondage. They'd been down there 300 years or 400 years or so without uh, any help. And God caused the death angel to pass through. And the firstborn in every household that did not have the blood on the door, you remember that? Died. Uh, and so every year after that, the Jews celebrated the feast of the Passover when death passed them by. And then after that, they would celebrate the feast of tabernacle, which means tent. Uh -huh. That's really another word for our bodies. All right. Our bodies are a tabernacle. Uh -huh. A tabernacle is that which is not permanent. Yeah. It's not designed to last always. That's why folk die. Because we're only tabernacling in our tabernacle. Okay? So, so, then, so then we're not designed to live here forever. So he mentions the feast of the tabernacle later on. So this is the feast of the Passover. And Jesus is now going to Jerusalem to celebrate that feast. Read. Now there is in Jerusalem uh -huh. by the sheep gate a pool. Uh -huh. Which is called. Now the sheep gate is the gate where they brought all of the sacrificial animals in. Uh, you know, back during that time, uh, animals were sacrificed uh, to atone for the sins of the people. Huh? Yes, uh, uh, and I'm glad that uh, that was true. You know, there were, there were lambs that were sacrificed. And, and there were, amen, if you were poor, if you were poor, there were turtle doves that were offered as sacrifices. And there were bullocks that were offered. And, and, and this gate was near the altar where they would actually sacrifice uh, the lambs. Uh, but I'm glad, and I'll tell you that near the end, that there was a lamb. But, but that's, that's too early to talk about that. But, 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 but that was the gate that they would bring the animals through close to the, uh, to the altar. Read. Which is called in Hebrew uh -huh. Bethesda. Bethesda means house of mercy. It means house of mercy. And, and I'm glad that mercy is still in the Bible. Because some of us in the church don't know mercy. We know justice, but we don't know mercy. Uh, uh, I'm glad that y'all are not my judges. Because if y'all judged me, I would get no mercy at all. But I'm glad that every morning I get up, there is a just God that shows me mercy. Because if he hadn't showed me some mercy, I really wouldn't have gotten up this morning. Now, I know y'all would have gotten up because y'all good. Y'all got halos and wings. But I, I still have a few horns on my head every now and then. I, I don't always have halos. I don't, when that woman tore up my car, I was glad to get out. But I looked at her and, and, and a few thoughts came to my mind. 
But I had to surrender those thoughts to Jesus. My, my brakes failed. I mean, you, you, you know, you're running around with bad brakes, hey man, and tearing up folk cars and halfway killing folk. I, I had some thoughts that came to my mind, but, but I wouldn't let that. I, I, I tore up my car all in pieces. Got me hopping and hurting and going on. Mercy. This place was called Bethesda because the folk that were there needed mercy. I want to know if the folk that are here need some mercy. I came here because I need some. I didn't come here because I'm right. I came here because I'm wrong. Church is not a place for sanctified, sanctimonious folk who ain't never done nothing right sitting here pointing fingers at everybody else. I came here because I need some help. I tell you, I need help. You sitting there like you don't need none. And you know, it's amazing how folk get old and they, they get holy. They sit piously by, oh, yes, I remember those days. I, I'm so close. I'm close to God now. I'm close to God. You, you, know, you know you do some stuff. You may not do it like you used to do it, but you still do a few things here and there. Read, 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 read a little further. Let me go ahead and get done with this. Now, having what? Five porches. Now, this, this place was actually constructed, I want you to know, for folk who needed help. Uh-huh. It was actually, this area was constructed for folk who needed help. There ought to be some place for folk who need help yes, sir. Yes, sir. to go. Yes, sir. Y'all missed that point. Y'all, y'all missed your shout point. There ought to be some place for folk who need help to go. Yes, sir. And expect to find somebody who will help them. And brethren, if I can't find it at church, where, where else can I find help? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. Read. In these lay a great multitude of sick people. Now, now, now. This place near the sheep gate, uh-huh. they knew was a well traveled area. Yes, sir. Because if you go offer some sacrifice, you had to go by the sheep gate. So folk who needed help had the necessary traffic to solicit help from the folk who were going to church. All right. Folk who go to church uh-huh. ought to be the folk need the help. that give folk uh-huh. help. Now, often everybody will help you, but my, my, my. My, that's a whole different sermon. Y'all, y'all quiet. Y'all, y'all acting like y'all don't know what I'm talking. That's the folk looking at me so mean, like, mm. yeah, you, 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 you in church, you're supposed to help somebody. You are saved to save somebody else. You are helped in order to bless. God didn't give you your blessings to keep to yourself. God blessed you to bless somebody else. And you ought to make it a practice, as I told you the last time I was here, to try to bless somebody every day. Because when you start blessing folk, the Lord will keep pouring it in. Amen. Wish I had time. Go ahead. Sick people, Sick blind. Folk. Now, blind. Lame. Lame. Paralyzed. Paralyzed. Waiting for the moving of the water. Waiting for the moving of the water. Now, this man who's about to get some mercy was with a whole lot of other folk who needed mercy. Can you imagine being with sick folk all day, every day, who have no hope? And you're laying there every day waiting for the troubling of the water. And you've been laying there now for 38 years. That's a patient man. Some folk don't want to wait on their blessings at all. This man waited on his 38 years. Huh? 
Read on a little, read on a little further. I want, I want to see him get to them. Go ahead. For an angel went down at a certain time. Now, actually, in some manuscripts, Brother John, and some of the best manuscripts, this part about the angel coming down uh, is not there. In some of your versions, as a matter of fact, it's not there because it was just rumored. John tells us, as a matter of fact, when it gets to the scribe writing it for him, but actually it was rumored that an angel came down. But John says it, so I'm going to take what John said. All right. Okay. But the room, angel would come down, and he would do what? Certain time into the pool and stir up the water. And he would stir up the water. Then, uh -huh. who, then whoever steps whoever in steps first. Whoever steps in first. After the stirring of the after water. After the stirring of the water. Was made well of whatever was disease made well. he had. Uh-huh. Read. Now a certain man. Certain man. Was there who had an infirmity. How long? 38 years. Now, that's a long time to be sick. That's a long time to hang out with other sick folk. Hope is gone. You know, but I'm still coming anyway. Yeah. Ain't nothing happened for me in 38 years. Ain't nothing happened for me, but I'm still coming anyway. Uh -huh. See, you may not get your blessing in church this Sunday. Yeah. The way you're going to get it next Sunday or the Sunday after. But keep on coming anyhow. Because you don't never know when the Lord may show up. And just give you exactly what it is that you're looking for. Yes, sir. Keep coming in a half. 38 years. Read. When Jesus saw him lying there. Jesus saw him. Now, now, here's, here's interesting to me. Uh, this is the, one of the only cases in New Testament where Jesus is about to heal a man who didn't ask him to heal him. Mm. Everybody else that came to the Lord came to the Lord asking the Lord to heal him. But this is one of the few cases in New Testament where the Lord is about to heal somebody who didn't ask him. I learned that God knows what I need. And if in my feebleness of my prayer, I don't say to God and tell him exactly what it is that I need, but because he already knows it, the Lord would give me that which I don't have enough sense to ask him for. The Lord picked this man out. Watch this now. There are probably hundreds of sick folk that are laying there with this man. But it ain't their day. It's not their moment. Lord, I'm here. You gonna heal all him and leave me? Isn't it strange how God works? Your neighbor gets blessed that don't go to church. And your car raggedy won't go nowhere. You waiting on your blessing and your neighbor gets the blessing. Lord, that ain't right. You're trying to get a loan for the house. But your sister, who wasn't even really doing much, got a loan at a better percentage than you got. That ain't right. How come the Lord picked him out and left them other folk there? They needed some help too. Read a little bit. Let's tell you why. And knew that he already had been in that condition. The Lord knew he'd been there for 30 years. Go ahead. He said to him. He said to him. Do you want to be made Do well? you want to be well? And the question this morning, for those of us who are dealing with all kind of issues, do you want to get over your issues? I'm going to ask it again because y'all y'all think that's, that's, not, that's not a thought question. That's a real question. If you got some children problem, if you got some money problem, if you got some health problem, if you got some... You got some you problems. Do you want to get over your stuff? Y'all want to look quiet over here. Y'all want to get over y'all stuff? Then, 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 then we're going to do something this morning, all right? I came because I have issues that I need the Lord to help me with. Now, I don't need to tell you what my issues are. I want to keep them to myself. It ain't your business. I don't really want to know yours. You keep your and I keep mine. And we'll just tell it to Jesus. Huh? Now, if you smoke some weed before you got to church, don't tell me you smoke some weed. 
I'm just going to tell you like Jesus, go and sin no more. I can't see that well. I don't know if my weed smoker is smiling or not. But anyway, uh, we got some, you know, some folks are just waiting until they make it a recreational drug. I'm just waiting. It's coming, Brother Blakeney. Well, y'all ain't like y'all know what weed is in here. <laughs> oh, really? What is that? That's, that's not something that grew in your yard. That, that ain't what that is. Let's go on. I got to go. <laughs> the sick man answered him, Uh-huh. Sir, I have no man to put me into the now, pool. Now, 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 now. Jesus picks him out. He walks over to him and he says, you want to be whole? Now, you've been laying there 38 years. Wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it, wouldn't, wouldn't you think that the Lord wouldn't have to ask you what you want? I've discovered there are some folk, song leader, who really don't want to be whole. They're having too good of a time. Do you know if you gave the man sitting on that corner down there with the sign to my, well, you know, need help, a job, he couldn't beg no more. And he'd rather beg Some folk get more sympathy by complaining about their condition than by getting up and doing something about it. Oh, I just said something. People feel sorry for them. I feel sorry for her. And people like, some folk like folk feeling sorry for them. You need to answer the question, do you really want to be whole? And if you don't want to be whole, you're at the wrong place. Because I'm getting ready to make you whole. What does he say? Read. He says, I have no man to put me in the That ain't pool. what I asked you, son. He said, do you want to be whole? I ain't got nobody. I ain't ask you that. Uh -huh. I asked you a question. One of the reasons why we are not whole is because we're going around blaming other folk. My God. I got two other points that I'm doing. Stop blaming other folk. When you are in your problem and in your dilemma, look up and deal with your own mess. Huh? It's easier to say other folk got me in this mess than to deal with the reality of being in your own mess. It's not about who you had. I didn't ask you that. You had folk. Let me show you why you're looking at me strange. You had somebody to bring you here every day. Y'all missed that, didn't you? You had some friends, because they didn't stay there all night. It's too cold. They had to take them home at night and bring them back the next day. Now, you hollering, you ain't got nobody, uh, hey, man. How, how about them dudes that bring you out here every day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. They brought you and dropped you off. Now you blaming other folk for your illness. I would be, I'd be here, but I ain't got nobody to take me over there. I didn't ask you that. I asked you, do you want to be whole? In life, sometimes the only place you will find a helping hand is at the end of your own arm. Stop asking other folk. To do what you ought to be able to do for yourself. Thirty-eight years he landed. The Lord said, "Do you behold, Lord? I, I have no man." And and, and went read. When the water. When the water up, is what? It's stirred up. It's stirred up. But while I am. While, while I'm, I'm getting ready coming, to go, somebody another, goes in before me. Steps down before me. Uh, read. Jesus said to him. Jesus said to him, "What? Rise, take up your bed." Now, and now, walk. forget about other folk. It ain't about them. When you come to church on Sunday morning, it ain't about their issues. Yes, sir. It's about your issue. If I'm married and my husband and I are here, or my wife and I are here, 
is really a one-on-one -on -one relationship. It ain't about him doing better. It's about me doing better. Stop pointing at him and say, if he would, I would. That ain't the way it works. It's about you. Blaming other folk is what we do all of times in our lives. Children blame parents. Hmm? The arson blames the match. The drunk blames the alcohol. The weed smoker blames the weed. Adam blamed God. That woman you gave me. Y'all looking at me straight. I'm not making that up. Aaron blamed the people. Made a golden calf. He said, them folk. Folk like to blame other people. Stop the blame game and get ready for a blessing this morning. Go ahead. So and immediately this. the man was made well. He told him, get up. Get up. Not only get up, take up. Yes, sir. Get up, take up your bed. And walk. And walk. I'm getting ready to go somewhere with this. Let's go. And immediately the man was made well. And immediately he was made. That's different than my boy in my town because, he, you know, he, he claimed to heal some folk, but they didn't get well real quick. You know, they, they, you know, he he claimed I can lay some hands on some folk, and yeah, yeah. and you know, uh, yeah, you know, he up there in Tulsa. You know, he got a university named after him. You know, oh. built it on snake oil and other stuff, prayer cloths and rags. Fact, fact. If y'all just need a prayer cloth, I I pray over one, and I take the hundred dollars. My prayer would do a little better than his would anyway. Then rub it on your head every day. He said, Blakeney prayed for it. Yeah. Yeah. It'll do by the will of that snake oil you're going to rub on you. Yeah. Immediately. The man was made well. Now, 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 here's what you missed. It, it's little things. Jesus said, get up. Uh -huh. Can you imagine telling a man who hadn't walked in 38 years? Oh. Do you know this man had to believe? God didn't wave his hands over him, preacher. He didn't touch him. He didn't do any of that. He just stood, up, he stood a long way from him and told him, get up. Now, I ain't walked in 38 years. You didn't wave your hands. You didn't, put, you didn't knock me over like Papa. Well, well, well. You didn't do any of that stuff. And, and you want me to believe that legs that have not bent and walked in 38 years, you want me to believe that just because you said it? We miss so much of the text when we go through it. You want me to? He said, get up. It took faith because faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Faith. Faith made that man try legs that had not stood up for him for 38 years. Faith said, God said it and I can do it. So faith made him get up. Got up, picked up his bed. Read. And walked. Got his bed now. See, watch this. And that it day, prevented the possibility of relapse. Because uh -huh. that which had him, he now got it. My Lord. My Lord. Woo. When God, when God heals you and gives you the help you need, that stuff that held you down, now you can hold it down. That bed that held him for 38 years, now he holding the bed. Dope heads can stop. Amen. Crackheads can stop. Alcoholics can stop. Because God can empower you for you to take care of that which got you. Now here he is. Here he is. Here he is. Read. Read. Walking. And that day was the Sabbath. Walking what with his bed. would it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? That's the question that you and I need to answer. That's the question that rings in my ears today. What would it profit me? What would it profit you if we got all of the things we wanted? We, we got the right job. We got the right income. We got the right house. We 
got the right car. We got all of the things we wanted and then lost our soul. That's sad. And, 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 and so you really want to know what the Blessing Connection program is all about. It, it's about helping me. It's about helping you. It's about helping men and women be able to stand before God and hear God say in the life to come, well done. Don't you want to hear God say, well done? I want to hear God say, well done, our good and faithful servant. And so as you watch these videos of people getting baptized, understand what baptism really means. Baptism is really a symbolic act. It represents the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It, it represents the fact that I have given my life, I am being buried, I am being raised again to live a new life in Christ Jesus. It's, it's the opportunity for me to stand before God and hear God say, the substitution death of Jesus Christ, I no longer see you, I see him. It's Christ taking my place. It's not about my works, it's about the grace of God and that God sent his only begotten son. And so when you see someone get baptized, what they're really saying is that I've heard the good news that God sent his only begotten son. I believe that Jesus is God's son. I will confess with my mouth proudly that Jesus Christ is the son of God. I will repent of my sin. I no longer want to sit on the throne. I want Jesus to sit on the throne. I'm going down. I am getting baptized because I want to be able to say it's no longer I who lives in me. It's Christ who lives in me. That's what the passage is about in Romans chapter six, verse number four. Let me read it to you. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the father, we, that's you and I, we too may live a new life. Well, that's the plan of salvation. And for today, that's the blessing connection. I, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's our joy to uh, share this program with men and women around the world. And I pray it blessed your life. Our service times begin on Sunday morning with Bible study at 9 a.m. with classes for all ages, morning worship, 10 a.m. Evening worship, 5 p.m. And on Wednesdays, our midweek Bible study begins at 7 p.m. Please come and be our guest. If you are calling to request prayer, please dial 1-855-45-CONNECT. Our Twitter account is at Connect With Him. If you would like to purchase, call 1-855-45-CONNECT. 